All right, guys, we have the confirmation that Ukraine has used Atakams missiles on the Russian territory. It happened not in Kursk, by the way, but in Bryansk Oblast, where Russia stores its ammunition. The ammunition storage is located not far away from Maltina village. As it's been reported before, Russia stores there mostly the shells for their rocket artillery systems, like, for example, Grad, Uragan, and Smerge. Well, there was definitely the fire on the territory. It means that Russia suffered some of the damages in this storage facility and for sure Ukraine used the cluster munition attackums modification. Why do I think it was the cluster munition? Well, you can see lots of the flashes filmed by the eyewitness on the territory of this storage facility. Well, you may see mostly the dark picture, but there were multiple of the splashes, which usually happen when the small clusters detonate. The mainstream media confirmed the information that Ukraine used the attackums for the first time inside the Russian territory. Russia said that there was the launch of eight missiles and they've shut down five of the missiles, one missile was damaged and just two went into the targets. At the same time, Reuters signed some of the military officials from Pentagon is saying that definitely Ukraine launched eight of the attackers missiles, but Russians managed to shut down just two of them. The information about the number of the missiles was also uncovered, so Ukraine has around 50 of the attackers missiles which is not a lot. Ukraine should have at least 300 of those missiles to possess a real threat for Russia. Especially with the Russian air defense capabilities, whether we like it or not, but they're capable to shut down those missiles. So those are the main news we have. Ukraine is not restricted just to the Kursk region after all. Ukraine is free to use attackums at least to the Bransk Oblast, I think to Belgrade as well, maybe to Rostov, because Russia has lots of the military hubs there, also training facilities, but the question comes to the carriage bridge. Sometimes I read the complaints in the comment section that Ukraine still keeps the carriage bridge okay. But guys, come on, Ukraine is not alone in its fight and Ukraine is very dependent on its partners from the West. If the bridge is still okay, it means that someone wants it to be okay from our Western partners. Yeah, as usual, probably they don't want to escalate, but after all, every sort of the permission is given to Ukraine. In this case, with attackums, it was I guess too late to give that permission, but it's better late than never. And by the way, hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go. Guys, I just forgot to say that it's thousands day of war. 1000 day Ukraine is defending itself against the prevailing enemy also with the help of our partners. So thank you for your kind support of Ukraine, of democracy. Let's be honest, for now the support is fading away little by little. However, I'm sure that Ukraine will win this war. Those are our national team football players who showed the shirt today during the match with Albania. So what Russian officials continue to do? This is the foreign minister of the Russian Federation, who is now, by the way, in Brazil, and he directly, directly speaking that they may use nukes against their enemies because they changed their doctrine. By the way, it was recently signed by Putin. Again, open threats from Russia, they're escalating in the diplomatic and the media field. But the thing is, if they use nukes, Putin's regime will be ended altogether by West and some of the Russian allies, like for example China. I'm sure that China doesn't want to escalate to nuclear stage, because it will just open the Pandora box and there are two of the neighboring countries with China, like India and Pakistan, which have the nuclear weaponry altogether with China, and there is the United States presence also in that territory. And there is also the United States presence near Philippines and Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and the United States Army also does have nukes. For this reason and not only, I'm sure that Russia will not use nukes. Also, Putin, by the way, is not willing to lose his life or his power, which in this case could be hard to hold. You see, the majority of Russians even now do not support the war against Ukraine. They want it to be ended. But if that escalates to nuclear war, just crazy Russian Z supporters will support Putin. And, and that is kind of low to keep him as a president. So I'm sure that if Russia uses some tactical nuke, the Western intelligence will organize the special military operation very limited to eliminate the Russian leader. 
The Kremlin spokesman Peskov today again said that the usage of attackers may provoke Russia to use nukes against Ukraine according to the new doctrine. But new doctrine is not the order, it's just the philosophy of the possible usage of the nuclear weaponry which Russia still has. So for now we see the active blah 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 from the Russian officials, Russian media, they all scared actually, they want to nuke West, they want to nuke Ukraine. The same we hear from the pro-Russian useful idiots which Russia uses in their media campaign. For example, this congressman Thomas Massey calls for President Biden's impeachment over allowing long-range missile strikes on Russian territory. By permitting the strikes on Russia, Biden commits an unconstitutional act of war, endangering all Americans. This is an impeachable offense. Oh my god, there are lots of the politician clowns in the United States, by the way, not just from the MAGA side. And this prick, I don't know, I saw him on TikTok many of the times before elections. He is some sort of the MAGA community influencer and also useful pro-Russian idiot, judging on his speech. Let's listen to him. CNN breaking news. Ukraine fires US-made longer-range missiles into Russia. Ukraine has fired US-made ATA CMS missiles into Russia's Baransk region after the Biden administration gave Kiev the green light to use the longer range weapons against targets inside Russia. Most of the missiles were shot down, but now American made weaponry is being used as an offensive war into the interior of Russia. Does do we want a hot war with Russia? Are we already in a hot war with Russia? Do we want to get closer to a nuclear war? Is their plan to hand this this unspeakable mess to Donald Trump? And why now? The only explanation could be that this bipartisan group of war worshippers want to screw up the Donald Trump presidency so much they would rather watch the world burn than give up. <laughs> oh my God, he's so funny. <laughs> So, you know, if we open any sort of the military map here, for example, Ukraine entered to the nuclear state with assault taking the territory of Russian Federation with the help of the American-made weaponry, by the way. There are lots of the Abrams, Bradleys and so on. So why were they not screaming by the time that the Ukraine used the American weaponry on the Russian territory, actually eliminating lots of the Russian soldiers, I mean thousands. And now just few of the attackers missiles hit something, as Russia stated, by the way, that with their magnificent air defense they were able to shut down everything. So what are you worried about? Come on, you're a useful Russian idiot, believe Russian sources, because they say they're able to handle it. Yeah, and the sad thing that the those kind of the Lulu persons will be in power of the United States very, very soon. It doesn't scare me. I mean, Ukraine will handle everything. No one is able to push Ukraine to give up its territories. It is understandable. But in a way, it's kind of frustrating that the values of the human life, the values of democracy start to disappear in the Western country like United States of America. Well, I cannot say that for now for Donald Trump personally, but I do not expect the change for better for Ukraine under his presidency. Because the people he selected for his office and other officials are the most delulu possible. For example, as this guy who tweets those kind of the posts praising himself in the most narcissistic manner. Yeah, I guess again, as you can see, we are going to the United States politics even after the elections, because everything depends on the military support of Ukraine. And there was a funny picture on Twitter published, I picked it up for my Telegram channel. I usually do not review the memes, but this one illustrates the current situation in the most understandable way. I have many nukes and not afraid to use them. Okay, take me seriously, that's what is happening right now and also the part of the crazy community. Yeah, not all of them, but the useful Russian idiots, I mentioned them today and yesterday, just start to scream, take him seriously or it's World War 3. And actually World War 3 is trending now in internet, on the X platform as well, because the little boys decide to believe Putin. Well, I think it's just a big Russian campaign to threaten the West and its population if they continue to support Ukraine. They threaten West not for the first time 
and not for the last time. If you behave like that, you'll reach the goal of Putin. He wants you to be scared. He wants West to be scared of him. He's like this bully. I'm gonna destroy the world and I go to heaven and you not. That's what he spoke before. But honestly, he just scared. He likes his life and he doesn't really like what is happening on the front lines. Yeah, you may say that Russia is taking the ground, but for what cost? Russia will have to announce a new mobility mobilization 100% if they want to continue with the present pace. And what they take, they just demolish all of the villages, settlements, they're not useful for living. Is it profitable for the Russian economy? No. Is the Russian economy in a deep shit? Yes, 100% it is. And Putin understands that the only solution he has lies with the military support of Ukraine. He wants to cancel it and that is how he is willing to win. But the Western world will continue to support Ukraine with the United States or without. Yeah, if Donald Trump decides to cancel the support of Ukraine, the next four years will be very difficult for the country to withstand against the Russian attacks. Russia, after all, may get more territories, but they will not find their victory, for example, in Pokrovsk. It will be one more settlement which Russia occupies and completely destroys. Even the Russian people do not feel that victory. Then the Russian media and the military command report that, okay, today we got five villages under control, one settlement, which is big, we destroyed five thousand tanks, five hundred harmless systems and many attack missiles, Russian people simply do not care. Is it difficult for Ukraine even now? Yes, it is. The military support should have been agreed before, with a much larger scale, but somehow our allies didn't do it. That's why the Biden's administration or Harris administration, which didn't happen, wasn't the solution for Ukraine. And the issue lies mostly with this guy, Jake Sullivan, who was the national security advisor of the White House administration. Joe Biden really listened to him, but after all, has decided to give Ukraine the permission to use attack missiles and other systems deep into the Russian territory. Well, let's listen what Sullivan says in his short interview to journalists. Respond. In the past, you've tried to avoid provoking the Russians from escalating at times. You didn't provide tanks, uh, and then you did decide to make that decision to provide tanks. You didn't provide F-16s, then you did uh, provide those F-16s. Do you believe at this point, looking back, if you had provided any of those authorizations earlier, it would have made a difference to Ukraine in the war. Before Sullivan answers here, just the pure statistics, United States sent to Ukraine 31 of the Abrams tanks. 31. And how many F-16s? Zero. They just gave the permission to our Western partners to send their F-16s, which in future or in present are replaced by F-35s. Yeah, because they were speaking about tanks and airplanes, I'm telling you the number. Have we seen a marked difference since we have provided tanks to Ukraine in terms of the battlefield. Similarly on F-16s, have we seen a marked difference? Our view has been that there's not one weapon system that makes a difference in this battle. It's about manpower and Ukraine needs to do more in our view to firm up its lines in terms of the number of forces it has on the front lines. Here I want to stop him and comment that definitely there is no solo solution, but some of the solutions may definitely change the situation in Ukrainians' favor. Like for example, I told you there was the opportunity for Ukraine to kaboom many of the Russian airfields if Atakam's permission was granted well before. He also says do we see the change after the F-16s were transferred to Ukraine? Well, they have actually just a arrived to Ukraine and the number of those airplanes is not close to enough to fight against the prevailing Russian air force. Also the quality of F-16s, yes they are equipped with some sort of the mooring equipment, but still it's the old airplane compared to Russian Sukhoi 35. So you need tons of those airplanes to compete. That's why Ukraine is now forced to use F-16s just for its local air defense to shut down the Russian cruise missiles and drones. By the way, during the recent Russian attack, Ukraine has shut down a at least 10 of the cruise missiles using F-16s. So in a way they play the role, but it's not enough for now at this current stage. About the Abrams tanks, 31 from the biggest army in the world, it's just pathetic. Then they had announced the transfer of those tanks. I said, okay, it's the first batch of the tanks. Ukraine will receive more because our enemy has thousands of the tanks and they're able to produce hundreds of the tanks per year. And the Russian T-72 B3 and T-90 tank, it's 
actually a good tank. Yeah, they explode much easier. They are not safe for the crew, but still they are quite capable machines. They're really fast. They have tremendous firepower and they're much smaller compared to the Abrams tanks. And Russia still has tons of them. So 31 tanks is just uh, nothing in this scale of the war. Because Ukraine is losing more territory today than at any point this year. So do you really believe that nothing the U.S. could have done earlier would have changed that? We provided the tanks, we provided the F-16s, we provided the high Mars. They didn't provide the F-16s. Training for pilots, yes. They organized the logistics, yes. Permission for other countries to send F-16s, yes. But they didn't supply Ukraine with F-16s. They supplied their F-35s. They did actually great bounty replacing F-16s with F-35s in Allied armies. But again, Ukraine didn't receive enough munition from the United States if we speak about tanks and airplanes. By the way, there are lots of the military storages in the United States itself. And if Ukraine obtained just 10% of what the United States has in its storages, uh, Russia will be out of Ukraine in a matter of months. We provided the Patriots. We provided many of the things that you said earlier. For the Patriots, again, not enough for Ukraine to protect itself. The capital city may be some of the military airports, maybe, but still not enough. That Ukraine finds itself in a more challenged position on the battlefield, suggesting that there's not a straight line between those weapon systems and how it does on the battlefield. Where is the straightest line between, between Ukrainian performance uh, and inputs? It's on mobilization and manpower. Again. Mobilization and manpower. Oh, guys, I'm so mad, so angry on this guy because of his de-escalation policy. And what he says, actually, he blames Ukrainians and failed mobilization. He says that Ukraine needs more of the manpower, not the weapons, which is complete, complete nonsense. I'm happy that this guy is leaving, actually, his position. I don't know who is going to replace him, but at least we'll not see this clown in the White House. Let me explain why do I say like that? Well, simply, it's impossible to handle the Russian army with the manpower. Russia will always have more infantry forces than Ukraine, if we speak about the current war. Russian's population is at least four times larger than Ukrainians, and the Russian dictatorship regime doesn't care on their people. You cannot fight the Russian midwaves with Ukrainian midwaves. You'll always lose. So the only option possible is to give Ukraine weaponry, the weaponry which is much better compared to the Russian made. I always say in my videos that our Western partners produce the best of the best of the weaponry with longer range compared compared to the Russian made, more precise compared to Russian made, everything of that should be supplied for Ukraine if we want Ukraine to win. But if we say, okay, mobilize more army men to fight against the Russian army men, it is just the Delulu approach and it will bring just losses for Ukraine, not the victory. No, there will be the endless war until Ukrainian soil will be just covered with the blood of the fallen soldiers, so Ukrainians and Russians. What is bad that those voices were in the White House, so Biden listened to them. The voices of de-escalation were presented there for a very, very long time, even under Obama's administration. Then they say to Ukrainian government by that time that it's better not to fight for Crimea and let it to go to the Russian side. That's it. But after it, the war sparked in Donbass, and here we have the full-scale war, and they still proceed with their policy of de-escalation. If the United States of America stay that weak, the autocracies will rise their heads. We can see that they are already doing it, and the world may definitely change, change for bad, because autocracies understand just hard power. No negotiations, no de-escalation. There should be punched with the escalation from the Western countries. West should show that they are determined to secure their values, that they're not letting some bully to occupy some of the countries, which, by the way, choose the development in the pro-Western way. And yes, I'm so mad about those kind of the politicians and officials. Yes, actually, even more mad compared to the pro-Russian useful idiots. It is very understandable with them. But here, you know, this guy was in charge of this policy. And because of his action, Ukraine had more losses. United States should have supplied to Ukraine all of the weaponry well before and with much greater scale. But 
Ah. And also, guys, if you want to support the job that I do here, you may also join my Patreon. I'll put the link for my Patreon page right in the video description below. Thank you so much for supporting my motivation that YouTube cancels monetization. All right, to other news, there is the escalation in the Baltic Sea. Somehow, two of the cables which are carrying the electronic data and lying deep in the Baltic Sea has been damaged. European telecommunication companies have said drawing warnings from the European governments of possible Russian hybrid warfare targeting global communication infrastructure. And as they say, the Chinese vessel could be involved in this provocation or actually sabotage act. The German side, by the way, also said about the possible sabotage. The Denmark military actually following the ship right now. I don't know why they're not stopping it. What the German defense minister Pistorius said that the cables were damaged by the anchors. So this vessel could have just dropped its anchors and continue move and by doing so they did this damage. I'll speak with my friend, a vessel captain Timur Rudov, and I'll ask him the question of whether it could be done by accident or it is some sort of the definitely sabotage act. As for me now, it looks more like sabotage because cutting two of the cables with the anchors, it is something really unusual, especially in this region, where you have the special spots where you can drop anchors. And you have the coordinates and basically you can see those spots on the screen where you can anchor your vessel. The Russian Ministry of Emergency have created those kind of the barracks for the case of the nuclear war. One cube, as they say, is able to accommodate around 150 soldiers. As they promise, it is bulletproof and able to withstand the shock wave and radiation for some time. Well, I guess it depends on how far they are from the epicenter of the nuclear explosion. I would say that they are not that comfy inside and able to protect the personnel for some term period of time. I think that the standard underground trench bunker will be much better choice, so obviously it is better to dig this thing underground. Well, guys, let's continue now with the military map updates. So here we have the small counteroffensive done by Ukrainian army. There Ukraine used even tanks plus the small armored vehicles. It happened in the northern part of the Kharkiv region where Russia started their assault a few months ago. Before the Ukrainian armed forces were successful in this area near Hlyubov, and probably the aim of Ukrainian counteroffensive maneuver is to try to encircle the Hlyboke settlement. While well, Russian channels report that they've already stopped the Ukrainian offensive, causing all of the losses for all of the units, putting all of the tanks and armored vehicles. For now, I cannot prove that information. I'm, I'm still waiting for the video images from the drone cameras, from the Ukrainian side, from the Russian side to confirm how this offensive really works now. But the fact is the fact the Ukraine took some turn ground and yes even now Ukraine is capable to counterattack with those small bites but quite successful I think in this case we'll see the outcome of this one tomorrow and you know just now this night Ukraine launched one more strike in the Russian territory but this time using the drones Russians have reported that the minus factory was under the strike but you know according to documents this could be a minus factory but in fact it could be the drone factory only intelligence may tell you for sure so Russian said bloggers are laughing now okay this is the minus factory but in fact yes it could be a military facility okay it seems like I got some of the footage from the drone camera as a Russian side says this is the exact Ukrainian counterattack in the Kharkiv region some of the BMPs, tanks and infantry and I must say that definitely this attack failed the only thing is whether this is the truthful jail location of the particular attack which happened today or not. I'll just wait for more information confirmation coming also from the Ukrainian side or from Nitro experts analytics. President Macron commented that it was the right decision from Joe Biden to give the permission for Ukraine to use the Atakams missiles deep into Russia. Here I think that the majority of my viewers would agree with the French president. The only question is whether France will allow Ukraine to use the Scalp cruise missiles to attack the Russian territory with a full range, which actually may exceed 500 kilometers. Come on, Macron, you can do it. But yeah, again, if you check out the general picture, obviously Russia assaults and quite fast towards those villages. This is the most critical direction from all of the front lines. But you know what? The Ukrainian army group still has the way out from this pocket. How fast is Russia moving while charging on this military map update? 
quite fast. But still, they were not able to cut this very important crossroad in Uspanivka. That's why Ukraine still keeps the presence in all of those villages, because they have supplies. Quite tricky situation is also happening in Kurahava. According to my personal information, the fight is ongoing in the city center already. Some of the Russian small sabotage groups went into Kurahava. I would say it's a small attack, but it happened. The urban fights are out there. We may also check the update from other analytics for example from Michael 73 he mentioned here that the Ukraine lost the tank in Kurahova. Well, also Russia wants to encircle all of those fields with, with its strike towards Sonsivka, so they advance basically to cut this entire pocket and cause Ukraine to retreat from this place. And by advancing towards Avdivka from both of the sides, Russia will basically reach the borders of Dnipropetrovsk Oblast. Here is the border between Dnipropetrovsk and Donetsk, very close to this place. But from the tactical and strategical perspective, this area is not that important compared to Pavkrovsk. The settlement is the important hub from which Russia may advance to two of the directions at least. But again, even with their current impressive advancement, the biggest one and the fastest since 2022, Russia doesn't have enough military resources to make this huge operation here or to Dnipro possible. For this thing to happen, they need to announce a new military mobilization in Russia. And I'm almost sure that Putin will do it the next year. One more not good thing is happening now in the Chasifyar. Russians pushed Ukrainian defense, breaking it, and they went into the city. So it was a couple of days ago, and it is today. I expect that in the nearby future Russians will also advance from the south as they like to go with two vectors at least. Plus we have the update in the Kursk region, so Russians after all were able to propel forward near Pogrybki. It is the result of the multiple Russian strikes towards the Ukrainian positions. Russia lost a tremendous number of the armored vehicles and infantry forces there. Was it worth couple of those fields covered in mines? I don't think so. A mass murder Brevi called for the premature release from the prison, where he is sentenced just for 21 freaking years for elimination. 77 people. Norway. On oh, this face is definitely freaking terrible. Moreover, he shaved the Z symbol on his head. Plus, he was showing the banner in support of China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. I don't know what is happening in this head. I think this guy should be studied. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, after what he had done in most of the countries, he will be no more. But for Norway, it's okay just to keep him in prison in a quite comfortable environment for 21 years. Again, again, I'm speaking about it, because in this case, it is definitely crazy. But you know what? It's the real face of those dictatorships, especially Russia. And Putin personally done even more crimes than this Brevik, but he is there. He is shaking the hands with some of the politicians and with the head of the United Nations, Guterres. We live in a strange world, don't we? Where you might be in prison for the small crime for many, many years, even more than this guy. But then you zero millions of people destroying cities and towns. You're okay, you're fine. Or maybe it's better to release the guy, and I'm sure that some of the parents from those kids whom he zero to will find this guy not for the handshake. But you know those Nazis are already the part of the Russian army, so this is the real face of Russia, the commander of the Espanola Battalion. And this battalion is fighting against Ukraine for a very, very long time since 2014. If we open up the records for the Russian Russisch Battalion, Espanola and many more, you'll see lots of the neo-Nazis. Well, those you may find everywhere, but Russia is really supporting this way of thinking. Because they support violence, and what could be more close to violence than a neo-Nazi ideology? Alright guys, I'm happy to announce that there will be my live stream of this beautiful Ukrainian-made game tomorrow, Stalker 2. I was waiting for it for many years, because Stalker original version is one of my favorite games.
games. Yeah, before I used to play video games a lot and now maybe it's time to return to check out this game. I created the account on Twitch. I'll put the link for it in the video description below. It is not the advertisement of the game. I just want to tell you that this game is banned in Russia and the creators of the game do support the Ukrainian army. So the part of the funds which you may spend to buy in this game will go to support Ukrainians. And because of that, if any Russian citizen buys this game officially, Russia would consider it as the support of the enemy side of the terrorist organization. And the sentence for this case is up to 20 years in Russia. Yes, Brevik has the sentence of 21 years for eliminating 77 people. But just for downloading this game from the Steam platform in Russia, people may get 20 years in prison. I think that it could be the only reason itself to buy this game, but the game should be fantastic. Maybe it will be glitchy, but it will be released tomorrow for the first time stalker 2 i am waiting for it again i'm not sponsored by this game but mr grigorovich who was one of the main developers of the game used to fly in our air club in buzova near kiev i wouldn't say that he's my mate but i know the guy so for the kiev time it will be released at 6 pm for the european time 5 pm so i'll start my download at 5 pm and then i'll settle everything i think that i'll start the stream at at around 7 8 p.m depends on the download speed i hope that steam will not be glitching tomorrow because there will be many people who will download this game in case something goes wrong i'm gonna move the stream for one day ahead something like that but again it's not going to be on youtube on this channel no it's the total different topic and i'm gonna stream it on Twitch. Some of the cuts will be published uh, maybe on my other channel, cuts from the stream. So my friends, I'm going to keep you updated on the situation in Ukraine. For now, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video by doing so. You help me a lot. And as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.